Hey, what's up, welcome back. In this episode, you're gonna see how to build out a custom thank you page or order confirmation page after someone has gone through the checkout flow. We are continuing to build out our creator platform that allows creators to sell digital products. And this is a Stripe Connect platform. We've already got our marketplace set up, but after you finish paying, you're dropped back on this really fancy page that literally just says thanks. And so what we're gonna do today is take the um, this order summary with full order details from the Tailwind components. Again, this is a Tailwind UI thing that is paid. We're gonna grab this and use this as our sort of thank you page. Right now, our checkouts controller that is for the store just renders this plain text thanks when someone returns. So what we wanna do is go inside of our views and create a new view that will allow us to render this thank you page. So we're gonna add a show.html.erb and this is where we're gonna dump all of this HTML at least to start. So we're gonna grab that. Um, I don't know if that copied, okay, there we go. Uh, and then we'll jump, we'll dump all of that in here. And now we need to update our checkouts controller so that it renders the show route. So now if we refresh this page, now we see it's on the way. It's not gonna say it's on the way because you're gonna download something. This is gonna be for eBooks or audiobooks or some sort of digital download. But what we do wanna do is start filling out some of these details. So we need to know what was the item that was purchased. It would also be nice to know some of the information about the customer and maybe some of their payment method and maybe some of their, their actual payment details. These are available on the checkout session, which was the thing that we created before we redirected to checkout. So this Stripe checkout session object, after we redirect, and the customer pays, this checkout session object will contain a bunch of those details. Right now, we, we were redirected back to checkout and that is our success URL, the store checkout URL. But what we can do is we can add a query string parameter that will include the checkout session ID. So this is this actually has to literally be like open curly, close curly with this checkout session ID inside of it. And that is how checkout will know that it should include the checkout session ID. So let's actually go through the flow one more time. So let's say that we wanna buy this productive uh, Rails book, we're redirected, we enter in test at example.com and click on pay. Now when we're redirected back, we should have this CS underscore test underscore whatever in the query string on the, on the page where we're redirecting to. Also, we're receiving the checkout.session.completed webhook event, which we can also use to automate fulfillment of different things. So here you can see it now in the query string, we have this session ID, and that includes the ID of the checkout session. So here we can say, uh, we can actually like grab the checkout session by saying checkout session.retrieve and passing in the ID as params ID. And then we also do need to include the uh, Stripe account header and now when we refresh the page, we should have access to this checkout session. So at the top here, we're just gonna dump out at checkout session JSON, and we'll refresh the page here and we can see the JSON data for the checkout session. Okay, so a uh, couple of things. If we look at, if we look for line items, which was something that we passed in the creation of the checkout session, you'll notice that it doesn't exist by default. That's because we need to expand it. So we have to say expand line items. Now we can see the line items. So line items. Now this is going to be an object that has data. So it's gonna give us the line item object, which has the amount for the line item and it has a description and it has information about the price, which is great. Uh, and this price also includes reference to the product. That product should be stored in the database. We can use that product to look up the, uh, the image URL, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is actually looking pretty good. So what we can do is start pulling apart different pieces of this checkout session that came in and using those to populate the content below. So we don't have the concept of an order number, but what we can do instead is put in the payment intent ID. So let's do that. So your order number is going to be something like, uh, you know, checkout session. Maybe we'll put checkout session dot payment intent. I believe that should have the ID of the payment intent. And okay, cool. So now it says your order, which has this payment intent, whatever has shipped and will be with you soon. Uh, or like 
is now available for download or something. Okay, and let's see, tracking number. We don't have a tracking number or any content like concept of that. So let's just make that tracking number also check out session.payment intent. The ID of the payment intent does have like a lot of nice niceties inside of Stripe. So that should be something that, you know, the end user could use to kind of like track down information pretty easily about what happened with the um, with the order. All right, so now we want to like sort of iterate over all of the line items in case there were many. And so the way we're going to do this is it looks like perhaps uh, which part do we want to copy? Yeah, I guess we want to uh, use this entire thing and say check out session.lineitems.data.each do line item and that should give us some information about the line item. So now for each line item we should see a new kind of row here and oh we just see one because there's only one line item and all right so for each line item we should have the name of the item that was purchased so i'm thinking we might actually want to look up the product the product information from the uh from the database but we could also look it up directly on the checkout session if we were to expand this product information. That way the, that way Stripe continues to be like the single source of truth. Let's go back to the checkouts controller. And in addition to expanding line items, we're going to say dot data dot price dot product. Uh, let's see if this will work. Okay, so now we have a whole bunch of product information, including the name, description, and even a link to the URL. Which notice that this actually stored the AWS URL, um, so that was kind of like the unfurled or whatever, like the the end resulting URL. All right, so now we want to go back to our um, checkout show, and here we should be able to say line item dot price dot product dot name. I think let's see if that gives us what we want. There we go, productive rails, cool. All right, fantastic. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the description. Line item dot price dot product dot dis Okay. And there we've got the description. Let's change the image also. So images is gonna be an array of URLs. Uh, should be images. Yeah, that should be an array of URLs. Hmm. Oh, okay. So this is actually th even, so this unfurled thing is actually not accessible. It's not publicly accessible. It's only accessible because we have the rails. Yeah, we have the rails URL, like the processed URL or the, the proxy URL. So the, the URL that we're sending to Stripe is actually incorrect, so we'll have to go fix that. But uh, for now, what we can do is instead of passing the image from the line item from Stripe, we'll just look up the product. So we'll say product is, um, let's say product.find by Stripe ID line item dot price dot product dot ID. Okay, that should give us a product. And then here we can say, um, we can actually make this an image tag for product.photo. And then we can give it the class equal to the same class that this thing came with. All right, let's see if this wants to work. All right, cool. Now we've got an image there, that's pretty cool. And we have the quantity, so let's actually put the quantity in there as the legit quantity. So this is gonna be line item.quantity. 
we only have one, so that should actually be the same. And then the price is gonna be, um, number to currency of line item dot price dot unit amount uh, divided by 100. Let's see here. Okay, now it shows 100. Fantastic. Now, uh, you'll notice that we don't have any customer. Uh, we have very little customer details. It just shows the postal code and the email address. But we didn't collect any other information. If we wanted to, we can enable more customer information, like more customer collection, um, customer information collection. But for now, we're just going to say like, this is going to be delivered uh, or like for something. And then we'll just put this in like their email address. Um, so this is gonna be checkout session.customerdetails. I think it's email, customer email or email, email. Okay, refresh. And now we see that it's for this email address. I'm just gonna remove billing address. So, or actually I'll comment it out because we might wanna come back and add that later, we'll see. And then the payment method, there is some. there is gonna be some payment method information on here, um, but it's gonna be available through the payment intent. Right now the payment intent is not expanded and so we're just getting back the ID of the payment intent. So we might wanna come back here and say, in addition to those line items things, let's also expand the payment intent. Oh, okay, so in order to get down to that, we have to say payment intent dot payment method. We want to expand the payment intents payment method. All right, so now if we look at this payment intent dot payment method, we should see, okay, here we go. Here we see the information I was hoping to see. Payment method dot card. So here we have uh, payment method dot card. And underneath card, we have the brand dot brand. All right. Now we see Visa. Okay. Um, dot capitalize. Great. Now for the last four, we should be able to say something like, let's move this down. Check out session dot payment intent dot payment method dot card dot last four. Let's see if that's 4242 and it is, that's great. Um, the shipping method, we're gonna say like downloadable, download up to available up to three working days or something, I don't know. And then that could be kind of like the idea about when you can actually use or when you can actually download the product. Um, the other thing that's available here is the receipt. So there's a receipt uh, email, there's a receipt URL here, and this URL would show um, details about the purchase, like the same or similar details about the purchase. So we can copy that and open up that receipt and we can see now a branded receipt. And so we wanna link to that too somewhere down here. So. I'm thinking maybe we make this tracking number a link to the receipt. So let's change this from being a tracking number to being a receipt. And this is gonna be something where we're just gonna say, this is an, uh, an A tag that's gonna go to checkout session.paymententcharges.data.first. So inside the payment intent, it's gonna have a list of charges. The first one is gonna be the most recent one or the one that was successful. And that should have a receipt URL. Um, and I think that might be what we want here. Let's also make this view receipt. We'll make that actually be the ID of the payment intent. Um, so this is gonna be payment intent ID. And let's come over here, refresh the page. All right, so now we have this receipt that has this link, and when we click on it, we're brought out to the receipt, which looks great. Okay, so now we have a receipt, we've got a product description, all the line items are here, 
This tells us who it's for, it's downloadable. All right, let's work on this subtotal and total. So if we search for subtotal uh, or amount subtotal, this is gonna be something that's available in the amount details, I believe, for the entire checkout session. So the checkout session itself has an amount subtotal, amount total, and amount tax. So we're gonna put those directly down into these sections here. So let's say number to currency, again. Number to currency is uh, checkout session dot amount total. Okay. So the total was 100, that's great. Uh, shipping, there is gonna be no shipping, so we'll just remove that. So we could offer discounts and then um, look those up. So perhaps in a future episode we'll do that. So I'll just comment this out for now. And then the subtotal here, we'll just put this again as uh, one of these number two currencies. And then we're gonna put amount subtotal here. And now we should see the subtotal. Okay, subtotal, total. And we could also potentially put it in taxes there, some other things. This Apple Pay, let's just remove Apple Pay from there for now. Um, we could detect whether or not it was from Apple Pay and display that. We could also do that. Um, okay, at this point, we can remove the JSON stuff, and now we have a pretty decent thank you page for the order. This is feeling like a really nice thank you and checkout confirmation page. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.